do, it's pretty much like three problems in one. We've done this problem before, we're going to add. We've done this problem before, we're going to subtract. After that, we will have one fraction over one fraction. We'll be back in this situation. I just have to follow me along on that. Okay, so that's our, our goal for this complex fractions. You must get one fraction on the numerator and one fraction on the denominator first. Then you set up your division problem. So let me write that down and then we'll start adding these fractions. So we're going to get one fraction on both the numerator and denominator first before you start setting the division problem. So we're treating this like three problems in one. The first thing we got to do, let's look at one half plus one sixth. We're going to ignore this main denominator right now. We're just looking at the, at the main numerator. Can you tell me what is the LCD for one half plus one six? Six. Good. We don't want to work too hard, right? We don't want to do 12. That's too much. Someone write out LCD is six. Ladies and gentlemen, do I need to multiply this right fraction by anything? No. Do I need to multiply the left fraction yeah. by anything? Yes. By what? Three. Three. So from our main numerator, I have 3 sixths plus 1 sixth. Do you see where those fractions are coming from? Okay, so from, from here, that's how we're getting this set of fractions. Now the main denominator, I also need a common denominator because I'm subtracting. Can you tell me what is my LCD for 3 fourths Twelve. minus 2 thirds? Notice how the LCD does not have to be the same. It really is like doing two problems in one. This is one problem. This is a completely separate problem. You don't need the same LCD. Nod your head if you're with me on that. Don't need the same LCD. LCD here was 12. Yeah, for sure. What do I multiply the right fraction by? Four. And somebody else, what do I multiply the left fraction by? Good. So these two fractions are going to make up my new main denominator. What's the left fraction give you? Okay. Someone else, what's the right fraction give you? So we've changed our numerator into 3 6 plus 1 6. We've changed our denominator into 9 twelfths minus 8 twelfths. Are you okay so far? Yeah. Okay. We're almost done. We really are. We're almost ready to make this a division problem. The only thing we got to do is combine these fractions. Look, at this is just like adding fractions. This is just like subtracting fractions. That's exactly what we're doing. So if I do that, I know I'm going to have 3 plus 1 over 6. I'm going to have 9 minus 8 over 12. What's our top fraction going to be, please? 4 over 6. Four over six. So top fraction is 4, 6 over, what's the bottom fraction going to be? 12. Good. Hey, would you raise your hand feel okay getting this far? Raise your hand feel okay getting this far. Good, all right. So at this point, if you really look at it, we've just added fractions. You should know how to do that at this point. We've, didn't you just have some homework on that? No. Just learn how to add some fractions. We know how to subtract some fractions. You just had homework on that. So we know how to do this part and that part. The only thing I've taught you today and, and yesterday was going from here on out. We've already done that. We've done it a few times today. We did it one time yesterday. We just now need to set this up as a division problem, flip it, or reciprocate it, and simplify it. One question, and I think Tanya asked this, can you simplify this before you set up your division problem? Yeah, why not? Why not? If you wanted to simplify this little part of it, you certainly could, for sure. That's not going to change your problem. If you don't simplify it now, is it a big deal? Not really. You just got to make sure that you do simplify it at some point. Why are you starting to simplify when you, when you do the multiplication? You will. You're going to simplify it at some point. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is it doesn't matter where you do it. You can do it here, fine. Just don't forget to do it later. You with me on that? Yeah. You sure? 
Yes or no? I gotta have something. Yes. What would you rather do? You want to simplify now or later? Now. Now? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> hey, you could easily write this as two thirds over one twelfth. You can simplify your fractions now. That's not a problem. Notice that if this had been a problem all by itself, you would have gotten four six, then you would simplify four six as two thirds, right? So that's, that's just fine to do that, no problem. Now we have 2 thirds divided by 1 twelfth. That's exactly what we're going to write. Two thirds divided by 1 twelfth. And we know how to divide fractions, so this is really a non-problem anymore. We know we're going to reciprocate the second fraction. We'll have 2 thirds times 12 over 1. Well, you reduce 4 sixths. 4 sixths is 2 thirds. Divide both top and the bottom by 2, or write 2 times 2 over 2 times 3 and cross out those 2's. We should be able to do this for, with no problem at this point. So 2 times 2 over 2 times 3, 2's are gone. That's the intermediary step right there. Now, over here, we've, we've reciprocated the second fraction. We'll extend our line, we'll put our multiplication. Does anything simplify out of that? 3 goes in 3 one time, and into 12, how many four, times? 4, 8. What are you going to get? 8 over 1. 8 over 1. Or 8. Or 8. My God. Now, question, are you going to get the same thing whether you reduce first or not? Yes. yes. Absolutely. You're just going to have a little bit more simplification here to do if you don't change that to 2 thirds. You'll have 4, 6, you'll have to simplify the 6 with the 12. And then you get the same exact thing. What about that negative? What negative? Isn't that where the arrow is at? That one? Yeah. Nope. The smudge mark. My bad. <laughs> Better? All right. I was getting too excited and pointing out your math. I smudged it. My bad. Isn't it kind of amazing that this original problem works itself all the way down to 8? Isn't that kind of crazy? That's weird that that works. This is eight. If you if you had to pay a bill, you had to write a check out, you owed eight dollars, you just write that. Here's how much I owe you. <laughs> that's just, that'd be fun. No. I think that would be fun. After you get a call from the bank, what do you do? <laughs> Learn some math. Take Mr. Leonard's Math 80 course and you will learn how to do that. <laughs>